Well, as we've heard, the campaign started with the Conservatives claiming that a Labour government would increase the tax bill for working families by more than £3,000. But one independent expert from the Institute of Fiscal Studies said that that was an unhelpful figure based on too many assumptions. Well, our political correspondent Vicky Young explores the Conservative claims and the response. If the books are going to be balanced, who will have to pay for it? The parties have very different ideas about how the purse strings should be tightened. Today, the Conservatives accuse Labour of planning tax rises of more than £3,000 for working households. But do their numbers add up? The first Conservative claim is that £30 billion needs to be found. That's if the books are to be balanced by 2017-18. But even this starting point is disputed. Labour have actually been quite vague about whether they'd stick to that 1718 timetable. If they give themselves longer, the cuts aren't as drastic. The next Tory assumption is that Labour will find the money equally through tax rises and spending cuts. So that's how they reach 15 billion. But Labour have never confirmed this, and it seems to be based on something Ed Miliband said five years ago before he was party leader. As for the calculation itself, the Tories could have taken all households in the UK, about 30 million. Instead, they've used working households only, so 17 million. They've divided the £15 billion of tax rises by the 17 million households. That comes to £865 each, and they've multiplied that over three and a half years to get the grand total of just over £3,000. The Tories admit this is an estimate, but say they're explaining to voters how Labour plans would affect them. Well, unless they're going to tell us exactly how they're going to do it, then I'm afraid we're left to, to having to guess. What the Conservatives have been clear about is if we win this election, we will not balance the books of this country off the back of hard-working taxpayers. The independent think tank, the IFS, says today's Tory figures aren't exactly helpful. The Conservatives put out this number about £3,000 tax increases from Labour. Well, it's one of those strange numbers accumulated over several years based on all sorts of um, questionable assumptions about what Labour might actually do in office. It's always important to treat these sorts of claims with a healthy degree of scepticism. There is some potential truth in there in that Labour may well want to increase taxes at some point over the next Parliament to help deal with the deficit. But there's a huge amount of uncertainty about it. You certainly can't sensibly put a number as precise as £3,000 on it. Labour aren't pinning down their exact tax and borrowing plans, which allows their opponents to write their own version. Clarity on all sides might help voters make up their minds. Vicky Young, BBC News. Well, let's try and get some answers to some of those questions from the Chancellor, George Osborne, who's with me now. So David Cameron stood on the steps of number mm. 10 and accused Labour of planning £3,000 tax rises for every working family. Not necessarily true, is it? Well, it is true. I mean, that is precisely what they're planning. The Labour Party makes no secret of the fact that they are planning to increase taxes. Oh, not uh, by that figure, though, because, I mean, the well, Institute they... for Fiscal Studies, independent, uh, has looked at this figure and said that Labour may need no tax increases or real-term spending cuts beyond those planned for 2015-16 at all. But they have voted in Parliament for £30 billion of savings or tax rises. Ed Miliband in the past has said half of that comes from tax rises, and that equals £3,000 for working families. But people well, know... Well, it doesn't, according to the IFS. Well, actually, and they say that if they're serious about that vote in Parliament, um, it would still only equal £6 billion spending cuts and tax rises. Mm. Roughly half might come from, from tax Kathy, rises. Kathy, there's a very clear choice at this election. You can either go with the leadership of David Cameron, the economic plan has created a record number of jobs that is delivering a tax cut for working people by raising the tax threshold that is delivering one of the strongest economies in the advanced world, or you can have the chaos and the tax increases and the debt that they okay. hit about. And let me bring you back to well, the specifics. Can, well, this, I'm this happy is, to answer specifics, but can I make a general observation? Okay, I, I promise you. You've made the, the general observation. The general observation, the general observation is this. David Cameron said the on the doorstep of number 10, he used that figure of over £3,000 yes. tax rises. The IFS says there's little value in bandying around numbers. We don't know what they'll do after the election. And this is what brings politics no. into disrepute, doesn't it? Band around these figures that you can't then back up and you haven't been able to back them up. I, I've just explained how we arrive at that figure. It's based on what the Labour Party has voted for and what Ed Miliband has promised. And you know, you talk about David Cameron being on the steps of Downing Street. I remember five years ago when he gave that speech as the new Prime Minister and it was difficult to imagine a more terrible inheritance for a Prime Minister, the country on the brink of economic catastrophe. Five years later, we've got a record number of people in work, we've delivered economic security for families, the job's not done, but Britain is growing. And we can either continue with the plan that's working or okay. go back to the chaos of the past, back to the taxes and the debt and the spending okay. of Ed Miliband. And that you is say, the stark choice facing okay. I'm joined by Conservative Party Chairman Grant Shapps. Good evening to evening. you. Um, now, you made a claim today that 
under Labour, taxes for the average working family would go up by £3,028. That claim has been pretty thoroughly demolished. Are you still holding it or, are you, or not? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, look, the claim is very straightforward. Labour walked through the division lobbies and they voted for £30 billion of consolidation. That means to reduce spending by £30 billion or having to raise taxes. Now, we've said we'll do that by reducing expenditure, £13 billion off the departments, £12 billion from welfare and £5 billion from uh, getting rid of aggressive tax avoidance schemes. So we've explained how we're going to do it. Labour, on the other hand, have said we'll do it through partially through tax rises. Edmund LeBan suggested before 50-50. Uh, the tax rise message has been repeated by Ed Miliband, by Ed Balls, by Harriet Harman this year. So if they are going to do half of that 30 billion, that's 15 billion through tax rises, and they perhaps are going to apply that to the families who are working in this country, £3,028 over right. this part. Why then have you accumulated the tax rise? We'd normally express this as an annual form, and we'd normally express it per household. You've expressed it per working household. Obviously, that makes it a higher number because it's for a smaller number of households. So the IFS said, if you believe the 15 billion that you've just talked about, which they don't, um, it would actually be 560 pounds, would be the normal way of expressing it. Um, but they don't believe the 15 billion. They think it would more plausibly be 3 billion because the charter for budget renewal, the fiscal responsibility will be updated in a few months' time, and that will give them a great deal more wiggle room on current figures. But first things first, um, the charter itself um, is something that has already been voted on. In other words, the £30 mm -hmm. billion pounds of consolidation. So Labour walked through those lobbies and they said, yes, we want to, we, we're voting for £30 billion of consolidation. So you can't now say, well, actually, that's not what they meant. That is actually what they voted for. And then secondly, think of it this way. This is the first Parliament which has sat for the full five years we've just had. We know the next date of the election. I know the next one's not for 37 days, <laughs> but the one after, <laughs> I can reveal, is the 7th of May, 2020. So we know the date of that election. Unlike in pre previous cycles, we can confidently talk about a five-year process. And I'll just leave you this thought as well. It, when Labour, for example, talk about building more homes, they always talk about that over the length of the Parliament. In fact, they recently right. did an announcement So you're benchmarking this cumulative so why wouldn't you, nonsense. Yes, why, it is why nonsense. Wouldn't, Look, Grant, Grant Chaps, everybody knows, as a way of expressing a tax rise, cumulating five years is... is, is, is well, I'm not really sensible. sure why you're saying but, that, because, because that's everybody how much more people are going to pay over five years. Everybody respectable does it per year, so you can make a judgment so, so, about how so, much... So answer me this, be. why would that be uh, an odd thing to do? But, for example, when Labour announced their housing figures, uh, that to be cumulated over well, five years. I'll tell years. you why we don't. It's because when you talk about your welfare cuts, you call it 12 billion. We don't call it 60 billion, even though it's going to apply over five years. If we talk about your 12 billion of welfare cuts, that's 80% of the, the 15 billion that you're talking about of tax increase. So but, you've got to find 2,400 pounds for every working household in the country if you want to use these ridiculous ways of calculating well, I, I, I just it, don't, I just which don't, none of us want to do. Well, I just don't buy your argument because people <laughs> are going to go to the polls in 36, 37 days' time. And they're going to say, look, if I vote for Ed Miliband, what am I going to get? And the answer, apart from chaos, is, well, over the lifetime of the next parliament, let's be clear, over the lifetime of the next parliament, you will pay more than £3,000 if you're a working family because Ed Miliband himself has said half of that £30 billion consolidation that he has voted for with his party will have to come out of right. tax so, rises. Yes. And we, so this is all pretty clear, and right. I think people need to know about right. that when We've they go to the We've got a problem here, is you say 3,000, the IFS come up with a figure more like 100 pounds per, per household, being more, trying to work out what Labour say. There are huge gaps in what Labour's policy is because they haven't told us. But assuming you can work out what it is, they think it's probably closer to 100 pounds than 3,000. Well, who just, do you think the public, who do you think the public should believe? Well, look. Do you think they should believe you? Or do you think they should believe the fiscal independent fiscal experts don't, of the Institute Don't, for don't take it studies? from me or them. Take it from the Labour Party. Because the other month, they walked through the lobbies and they voted for £30 billion of consolidation over the next is two this, years. If they, if they did that, they that can't... Already. Is this how you're going to fight on. the rest of the campaign? This is, it is obviously ridiculous, this figure. The, the IFS are quite sensible. They're quite independent. They wouldn't say much lower figure if it wasn't a better figure to use. They don't say that because they know that this figure is ridiculous. No, I, is, is it going to be... Ca how are the public going to make their minds up during this campaign? Well, look, if there's I, this I, slanging I, I around of you're... things... You're not expressing your welfare cuts. You're not telling us what they are. You're certainly not accumulating them over five years and expressing them per working household, which you could do, but we're not doing that. You're being very selective, and it's just making it very hard for anybody, isn't it, to make up their minds.